Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone on this uh, Lord's Day, this beautiful morning that the Lord has given us to come together and to worship Him. I'm going to pick up uh, um, from the same story, not right at the same spot that Richard uh, read from, and it's going to be part of the text from the lesson today as well. In those days, Caesar Augustus, this is, by the way, this is Luke chapter 2, verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a, a census should be taken out of the entire, uh, should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So also, Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David. Because he belonged to the house and line of David, he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them at the end. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, thank you, suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told them about. This season we, we read about this story and, and of course, all of, all of our lives, we've probably known, at least most of us in here, I imagine, I, uh, possibly a few, few exceptions could exist, but, you know, I wanted to reiterate something. Up until this time, um, up until this time of the, the events that we read about here, this was the, the, the most profound and important event in all of history, up until this time, because of what happened later. This was the most important event up until this time. Um, uh, since the creation of the world, the incarnation, God himself came to earth as a human. Amen. Amen. And you know, as the angel said, it would be <coughs> good news. And the, you know, as I was looking at this, I was thinking, um, you know, it actually wasn't good news for everybody. And you might think, well, Troy, are you saying the angel wasn't telling the truth? No. Not at all. It was good news. If, if it was accepted, it was good news. But think about it for a second. The King Herod wasn't good news to him, was it? It could have been. It could have been good news to Herod. But he chose not to see it that way. Hmm, was it good news to the Pharisees and Sadducees and the religious establishment of the time? Mm, no, not really, not to them. It could have been, and perhaps maybe to some of them it was later on. But no, because they didn't choose to accept it. They didn't choose to believe it. They didn't choose to, let's just say, allow room for God to work. The title of today's lesson and, and I, had, I had to struggle over this because really there's several things in this lesson that we're going to talk about today. Um, I chose waiting on God. Um, and you'll see why in just a minute why I chose that. But really it could be called submitting to God. Or it could, it could be a lesson on trust. Various things is what this could be. So think about it as we go through here. But the reason why... The coming of Jesus wasn't good news for everyone was because of the choices that people made. It was their choice not to allow room for God to work in their lives. And that's the challenge for us as Christians, continually to allow room for God to work in our lives. Because the more we allow God to work 
in our lives that the happier and more joyful it will be, the more it will be good news to us. So as we go through this, I want us to think about that. And let's just take a look here at the first part of this verse here, where verse 2, uh, chapter, one, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, in those days, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree. In those days, hmm, that actually says a lot, in those days. What were those days? Well, it was a time when the people were waiting on a Savior. And you might ask, how long had they been waiting on a Savior? Well, hmm, let's take a look at this passage right here. Let's see here. Which button am I going to press? Let's go to the first slide. There we go. Oh, too much. Let's go back. There we go. Now, this was out of Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But as for you, Bethlehem and Ephathra, now you might think, what is the, where does that word Ephathra come in? That was a region. So it'd be kind of like saying Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, that's where that word comes in, Ephathra. Okay, so it's Bethlehem, that's what it's talking about. But as for you, Bethlehem, Ephathra, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Now, of course, this is a prophecy of the Messiah, the prophecy of Jesus to come. He was to become, obviously, be born in Bethlehem. There it is. How long ago was that written? Try about 700 years. 700 years ago. And furthermore, it had been about 400 years since the last prophet had written in Israel. 400 years. This country hasn't even existed that long. That's a long time. Many generations had come and gone, had died off, not seeing the coming of the Christ. Does that mean God was slack in his promise? No. And that's kind of where our lesson comes from today, waiting on God. The Israelites had to wait on God for the Savior to come. You see, sometimes when we ask God for something, we pray. Sometimes the answer is yes. And sometimes the answer is no. And sometimes the answer is wait. That's exactly right. Sometimes the answer is wait. And for a while, and for us, we may think that's a long while, the answer was wait. 400 years since the last prophet wrote, but then on that one blessed night, when the angels came to see the shepherds, it happened, and the Christ was born. God had a plan here. He had a plan, and it was not going to be changed by humans, and it was not going to be thwarted in any way. And he still has a plan. But we need to remember that we don't always understand on this side of eternity what God's plan is. Now, it's, it's a, such a blessing to be able to look back and see how God worked in bringing Christ into the world. And he made that record for us that we can see what happened. And it's an amazing story. But, you know, God's still working in our lives as we go forth today. And we don't always see his purposes right away. And this is something we need to understand that we don't always understand. Isaiah 55. Let's see if this goes. Isaiah 55. Verse 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And that's true. It was true back then. It's still true today. And we need to understand that. That there are many things that happen, and we don't understand exactly what God has in mind, but we have to, our job is to wait on Him and to trust in Him. You know, there's something else that I wanted to bring out here. The Israelites, when they expected a Savior, when they were looking for the Christ, they were not really looking for who Jesus was. They were not looking for that kind of a Savior. They were looking for a king who was going to rule in Jerusalem 
on the throne of David, a physical kingdom, a physical king ruling over a physical kingdom on a physical throne. And that is not what God had in mind. That is not what he had in mind. The people's expectations were not in God's plan. They were looking for a political leader. They were looking for someone to bring back their national pride. That was what they were looking for. They were under subjugation of the Romans, and they didn't like that a bit. And their national pride was hurt because they had to pay taxes to a, someone else. And they wanted someone to rescue them from the Rome, rescue them from the Romans. Although the Romans actually let them worship as they saw fit for the most part. But that's what they were looking for. And why did this happen? Was God unclear? No. God was not unclear. Let's, matter of fact, let's just take a look at another verse here. This is um, Isaiah chapter 53, same prophet. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but, verse 5, he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Verse 6, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's the story of Jesus. That's it, right there, written some, I think, more than 700 years on this one before he came. But they chose not to look at this one. They chose to ignore this verse and just look at the, the ones about his power and majesty and all of that. So surely Jesus couldn't have been the one because he ended up being crucified on a cross. But isn't that what this is talking about right here? The suffering servant? See, the Jews decided to ignore some of the scriptures and just focus on the others. Oh, thank goodness we don't do that today. <laughs> yes. We can do that today, unfortunately, if we're not careful. But that's what they did, and that's why you wonder why they didn't necessarily recognize him. Well, there's probably other reasons as well. First of all, look what it says on verse 6. It says, we all like sheep have gone astray. I will tell you, many to whom Jesus came did not feel that way. They were God's faithful. They had not gone astray. Why, we were faithful servants. We go to the temple, do our sacrifices. We pay our tithe our money. We worship, we're faithful, we don't need anything, we don't need that, we want someone to come and be king. Ah, oh, see, many times our pride can keep us from seeing the will of God. Our pride can do that. And the most insidious thing about pride is the person who has it usually is the last person to know it. That's just the way that is. And the, their pride kept them from seeing Jesus for who he was. No, God was clear. It's, it was the people's fault that they didn't recognize him. The people could not imagine a hero like Jesus. They had preconceived ideas as to how God should act and what he should do. You know, and I, we joke about it, but the truth is we do that too. We do that too. We have ideas about how God should act. We make all kinds of plans, don't we? We make all kinds of plans with our lives, and, and, and they don't always work out. We, you know, I, I uh, plan to go to this college and get this degree and get this job and make this much money and get married and have, uh, you know, have a wife and, and then have perfect children who always obey me and, you know, and all, yeah, some of y'all are laughing out there, right? Okay, and, and you know, we have, these, we have these, these plans to eventually have grandchildren and everything else. You know, it's, 
And sometimes, you know, sometimes some of them may come, may come about and sometimes they don't. Maybe God has a different plan. Sometimes things don't always work out in our lives the way we want them to. But we have to trust God for what's there. That's the key here. That's the, I, and that's part of the story that I'm pulling out. The people of Israel had different expectations for who Jesus was, but sometimes we have to realize God has a better plan, and he did. He had a much better plan. I'm going to hold up someone as an example here. <clears throat> My nephew, Matthew Tyson, um, he and his wife, Ashley, and I hope I can get through this story <laughs> without crying here. But anyway, um, he, um, he and his wife just had a baby back on December 4th. And some of y'all know her, been praying for her, and greatly appreciate it. Her name is Clara. And um, on, uh, shortly after she was born, there's problems started to occur. And they found out later that she had a bacterial infection that was not caught early enough. And she was transported to University of Iowa uh, NICU unit there, which is one of the top hospitals in the country for prenatal care. And um, anyway, but they... Uh, they basically had said that they got her there too late. Um, there, was, there was no brain activity. The only thing keeping her alive at some point was the <coughs> machines. And um, it was just a sad time in our family. Nancy and I uh, made plans to go up and to be with them for the funeral service. They were going to disconnect the... Uh, they were, excuse me, I'm sorry. They were going to disconnect the machines, and, and that was going to be it. <clears throat> and we were in um, Cracker Barrel, uh, Mom, Dad, and, and uh, Nancy and, and Darlene were in there eating before we caught the airplane up, and we got a phone call from Matthew. And uh, all of a sudden, Nancy started crying in the restaurant. And uh, I didn't know what was, what was going on. And um, she spoke up, and in between gasps, she said, the baby has had a complete turnaround. Um, the doctors don't understand it, but the baby has had a complete turnaround, and they expect her to be able to go home with them. And um, it was uh, amazing. Um, and I, I had prayed for a miracle. I did, and God sent it. Uh, the doctors did not know what happened. But we do. There she is. Um, <clears throat> they don't know exactly when she's going to be able to go home. She's been moved from, the, from that part of the intensive care unit. I think uh, someone's going to read an update later on on it. We really appreciate all your prayers. But here's what I want to bring out about this story here that has to do with our lesson today. And that is Matthew um, during the darkest time when the doctors had had a meeting with them and told them that it doesn't look like anything's going to happen here. It doesn't look like the baby's going to survive. They told them that, point blank, and they had no hope for it. Um, Matthew sent out a, a text or an email and said that Ashley and I accept that we are not going to be taking uh, Clara home with us. But he said, God is still God, and God is still good. And that was a quote from him. And I thought to myself, Matthew has grown up a lot. And it was after that that we heard the news. It was after that. And you know, I don't think that that was a, I don't think that that was a coincidence. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that God had to do that, but he did, and we praise him for it. You know, it was an amazing thing that happened. Um, and I just wanted to, to hold him up for that. You know, there's a passage that um, I want to pull up here. This is from Habakkuk 3.17. It says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will still rejoice in the Lord, and I will be joyful in God my Savior. 
And that's where we need to be. That's where we need to be. Because we understand what God has given us. We understand the blessings that we have received from him and have currently. The spiritual blessings in Jesus. We know that if we're Christians today, we're saved. We know that we have a salvation and that we have a relationship with him. And so, with that in mind, I want to look at another person here. And that's one that Richard read about. And um, let me see if I can pull that up here in just a second. And that would be Mary. <clears throat> Mary received the, uh, the call, the, the, the message from the angel. And, um, you know, I was just thinking when she got that message what she could have said, the things that she could have been thinking. You know, I mean, I, I thought about that. Um, Imagine all that she could have thought and said, you know, I mean, maybe she could have responded to Gabriel and said, you know, this is not in my plans. Well, you know, like, yeah, was that in her plan? Absolutely not. You know, um, the, what about, you know, what will people say? What will people say? Now, that's a big thing. What will Joseph say? How about that one? He knew it wasn't his child. Okay. So, I mean, you know, oh, but did you read the part in there where the angel told Mary, you know, oh, don't you worry about a thing. We'll take care of it with Joseph. Oh, wait a second. That wasn't in there, was it? Oh, they did take care of it with Joseph, but that wasn't in the part that he talked to Mary about. Mary just had to trust. You know, he, he could have, she could have said, I didn't sign up for this. Look what she did say. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me as your word, according to your word. And the angel departed from her. That's what she said. And, you know, that's the kind of attitude that we need to have in this life. Let it be to me as you, according to, you have, to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. That's a, 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 a faithful trust that's there. That's not worrying that's trusting that God will take care of everything? Do we have that in our lives? That's something to be held up right there. Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And that is that simple trust that's there in a situation that required some trust. And there it was. Back then those Jews who were looking for a physical king to sit on a physical throne and rule over a physical kingdom did not get it. And I mean that in two ways. They didn't get the physical king and they just didn't get it. If you know what I mean from a figurative standpoint, they didn't understand what was going on here. And later on, some of them probably did. Uh, I, I know that some of them did, but um, they didn't get it. But if they would have looked through the eyes of faith, if they'd have looked through the eyes of faith, they could have seen that God sent something infinitely better to them and to us. And his plan is always better than ours. I'll say it again. His plan is always better than ours. Amen. That's exactly right. Um, there is a poem that I'd like to read that kind of goes along with this, this thought. <clears throat> because... You know, the Christmas story is not something just for Christmas time. The lessons that are taught there are for us for our whole lives. Yeah. Our lives are but fine weavings that God and we prepare. Each life becomes a fabric, planned and fashioned in his care. We may not always see just how the weavings intertwine, but we must trust the master's hand and follow his design. For he can view the pattern upon the upper side, while we must look from underneath and trust in him to guide. Sometimes a strand of sorrow is added to his plan, and though it is difficult for us, we still must understand that it is he who fills the shuttle and he who knows what's best, so we must weave in patience and leave to him the rest. Not till the loom is silent and the shuttle cease to fly shall God unroll the canvas and explain the reasons why. The dark threads are needed in the master's skillful hand as the threads of gold and silver 
in the pattern he has planned. And um, that's some thoughts for us today to leave with us because ultimately God's plan gives us hope, joy, and peace as we see on all the Christmas cards. But it only does that if we allow it to. It only does that if we make room for God to work, if we believe it and we act according to it. And so, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and leave the message with you today. If you have need to respond today to the message of God, to the Word of God, we're going to offer an invitation. And um, that invitation is open to everyone. If you need prayers of the church, please come as we stand and sing. I heard an old, old story.